Okay, so it will be recorded. I'm going to turn on captions. Let's see. Okay, so that should help. And um, now I will turn it over to Diane Schreer, the co-president of the Alexandria branch of AAUW. Thank you so much. Thank you, Janelle. Greetings, welcome, and thank you to, for being with us today for this special presentation about the Alexandria Community Remembrance Project. I'm Diane Schreer, I'm co-president of the AAUW Alexandria branch. And with me presenting is Leslie Terigny and Salve Egris, for program vice presidents of the Alexandria and Mount Vernon branches, respectively. I also wanna acknowledge the AAUW of Virginia State President, Lane Stone, who is with us today. And thank you very much to the Sherwood Regional Library for hosting us and for our continued collaboration. It's been wonderful. Since 1881, AAUW has been one of the nation's leading voices promoting equity and advocacy and research for, for women and girls. AAUW and our 24 branches and 1,000 members across Virginia are among the nearly 1,000 AAUW branches nationwide. Our advocacy efforts on the national, state, and local levels support paid education, workplace and economic equity, including paid family and medical leave and paid sick leave, diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging, and narrowing the gender pay gap and many other issues. Please remember to leave your mics off and keep your Zoom view in speaker mode. Leslie will speak next. Hey, good morning. Thank you, Diane, and welcome everybody to this 18th day of Black History Month, 2023. In fact, it's almost 100 years since historian Carter G. Woodson and others raised the idea of what was then called Negro History Week. Over time, this has developed into Black History Month. Of course, this is American history. Today's program focuses on history, our country's history, our city's history. The only way we can ensure that the present and the future are different than the past is by studying the past. And that's what the speakers today are going to do when they talk about the Alexandria Community Remembrance Project. After their presentation, time permitting, there will be an opportunity for members of this virtual audience to ask some questions by writing them in chat. And you can do this anytime during the presentation so that we have them when we're ready for them. Once again, please keep your microphones off and you might find it helpful to keep your Zoom view in speaker mode. Now, before I turn the program over to our presenters, let me introduce you to two of them. And later on in the program, they will introduce you to two guest presenters. As always, I am honored to introduce Audrey Davis, who is no stranger to AAUW. She's spoken to AAUW of Virginia members many times before. Many of you know that she's co-director of the Alexandria Community Remembrance Project, as well as the director of the Alexandria Black History Museum. She's also a past president of the Virginia Association of Museums Councils and one of the founders and the current president of Virginia Africana Associates Incorporated. In 2016, the Washington Business Journal listed her on their top 100 list of Washington power players. And in January 2022, she was a recipient of the city of Alexandria's Martin Luther King Jr. Spirit Award. And as always, uh, she is very much in demand to be a speaker. So we are glad that she will spend time with us this morning. And then she's going to sneak out onto her next speaking engagement. And now let me go on because I'm also honored to introduce Tiffany Pash, the project coordinator of the Alexandria Community Remembrance Project. Prior to joining the project, she worked as a journalist reporting on education policy, the environment, and state and national politics. She has contributed to the Alexandria City Public Schools High School Project 
and the Industry Advisory Board. Before becoming a reporter, she worked with a series of nonprofit organizations dedicated to active nonviolence and conflict resolution. In the early 1990s, she worked in Belfast, Northern Ireland during the troubles for the Global Nonviolence Project and later with the Martin Luther King Jr. Center for the Study of Nonviolence in Los Angeles. And now I'm going to disappear and turn the program over to our esteemed speakers. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Diane, and to the members of AAUW. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Uh, Lane has our presentation and will be sharing her screen. And uh, I don't know if I can't see from my view if the presentation is up. Yeah. Ah, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lane. Thank you, Lane. Wonderful. It is my pleasure today to speak with you for a little bit before I, I have to unfortunately leave the presentation, but I'm leaving it in good hands with Tiffany Pash and our special guest speakers uh, who Tiffany will introduce to you shortly. But it is a pleasure to be with you this Saturday, the 18th, to talk about the Alexandria Community Remembrance Project and our talk today, Confronting a Terrible Past to make to create an inclusive future. What you're seeing right now in the first screen uh, was something that was unveiled uh, in late 2022, our official new logo for the Alexandria Community Remembrance Project, which was created by local Northern Virginia design firm, Design Minds. And it gives you a stylized um, A uh, that's slightly slanted with the white lines representing the many paths that come together to make Alexandria one. And it's really a beautiful representation of the work that we do because we all come from different directions, different backgrounds, but we all bring special gifts to our work with the ACRP. May I have the next slide, please, Lane? Right now on the screen, you see the mission. Oh, sorry, we could go back to the other. Uh, forward, yes, right here. Uh, we see the mission for the Alexandria Community Remembrance Project. And our goal is really to create a community that is a welcoming community bound by equity and inclusion. But to get to that beloved community, as Dr. King would say, we also need to work and to educate our community about our history of racial terror hate crimes. Uh, and these refer to the two documented lynchings uh, that we know about in our community, but also new research that is coming forward. And what you're seeing in the illustration are samples of the banners that we use that go up around the city for each remembrance for each victim of our lynching for Joseph McCoy and for Benjamin Thomas. Those of you who are lovers of history know that these banners are based on the very famous NAACP banners that flew from 1936 until 1938 out of the New York headquarters. And they would, uh, the banner would actually say a man was lynched yesterday. And they were flown from the window of their office in New York when that happened. And it was part of a 10 year anti-lynching campaign and it only stopped in 1938 when the landlord uh, who controlled their office was threatening to evict the NAACP if they continued to do this and to make a public pronouncement when a lynching occurred. May I have the next slide, please? We want to educate our community about lynching in Alexandria. And you can see the statistics here on this slide that from 1882 until 1968, there were over 4,000 Americans who were victims of racial terror lynchings. And we knew, no, 11 of those were lynched in Northern Virginia. And when we are discussing this, we are discussing documented lynchings. We are not trying to say that these are all of the lynchings that have occurred, but these are documented lynchings. And you have information about our two lynching victims, Joseph McCoy, who was just 18 when he was lynched in Alexandria, and Benjamin Thomas, who was 16 years old and who was lynched in Alexandria on August 8th. And in the illustration, the picture that you see is our, um, our pillar in situ at the uh, National Memorial for Peace and Justice in Montgomery, Alabama. So you see the pillar that relates to Alexandria. When you go through that memorial and Tiffany and our guest speakers were shared about the pilgrimage with you, it is a very moving experience, but you look at 
these pillars that list from anywhere from one, one lynching to over 30 lynchings in a community. And it is such an important uh, memorial that we all hope that you'll get a chance to visit one day. May I have the next slide, please? We are basing our work on the incredible work done by attorney, activist, author, uh, Brian Stevenson, who created the Equal Justice Initiative in Montgomery, Alabama. Many of you know either his book or his movie of the title, Just Mercy. But EJI, the Equal Justice Initiative, which has now grown to include the Legacy Museum and the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, create community coalitions. And they want communities to collaborate with them to make sure that we are educating people all across the United States about the legacy of lynching, mass incarceration, and racial terror hate crimes. And uh, we are proud to say that uh, the Equal Justice Initiative has been very proud of our work and we are even included in their community guide. Uh, may I have the next slide please, Lane? Thank you. Uh, EJI in their community uh, coalition work and collaboration work set out uh, several benchmarks that they like communities to achieve. And I'm proud to say that uh, Alexand Alexandria is achieving and surpassing uh, benchmarks set out by EJI because we have a full commitment to telling the story of African-American history um, from the early slave trade, the transatlantic slave, slave trade to the domestic slave trade to stories of enslavement here in Alexandria, but also stories of black achievement. We really are incorporating this history in the fabric of the city of Alexandria. But with EJI, we are working with them on research and on programming. And I'm sure many of you have attended some of our programs that we have done through the ACRP. Also soil collection from the lynching sites. And we had a very moving soil collection uh, in September of last year. Uh, our pilgrimage, which uh, uh, the group will tell you more about today, and our essay contest for high school students, which has just launched, and we are very excited about. So those are ways that we engage with EJI and the way that EJI engages with many people across the United States. May I have the next slide, please? In 2019, the city council appointed a steering committee and also approved our work for the Alexandria Community Remembrance Project. And if you have not, I encourage you to visit our website for the ACRP and also to sign up for our ACRP newsletter uh, that Tiffany uh, is the editor of, and it's an incredible newsletter. Please sign up for it, it comes out monthly, and you can also see archived copies as well. In 2019, when the city council created a steering committee, we have volunteers representing the following agencies that work with the city in addition to citizen representatives. And our steering committee uh, is a very important uh, group that works with and guiding what we are looking at as our continuing mission in the city. We've just recently had a retreat in January and we're very enthused about what's coming up for the, the next year. Uh, next slide, please. Our committee work, our different committees include research, soil and marker, public pilgrimage, education and programming, public outreach, and our steering committee, of course. The picture that you're seeing is at, was actually taken in uh, 2019. And this was at our very large community meeting. We had over 300 people in attendance at the Charles Houston Rec Center, where we outlined our upcoming work with the Equal Justice Initiative and had Kiara Boone, a representative from the Equal uh, Justice Initiative and who was our former community liaison with them, a wonderful person to work with, uh, speak at this event. We were able to have